we're going to take a look at our wages and labor calculator here. The spreadsheet is set up to have three different levels of wages. So these can be whatever you want. I've just set them up here to reflect the, you know, what the minimum wage is where I am. Um, so this might be somebody coming in and you know someone younger doing more trivial tasks, things like that, a more middle wage. And then this is your wage, actually. And I'm setting this at about $22 an hour. And if you're not comfortable with $22 an hour, you should maybe be rethinking this. Um, no, you can get higher than this for sure. Um, it's just a number to start with, and this is sort of a theoretical year one of production. So looking at, you know, when we do these calculations, it's not like, oh my God, this is losing money, this doesn't work. You need to redo your projections every year, and every year they're going to get better and better if you're running your business well. So when we think about this as a wage, whenever you're paying somebody a wage, there is an associated cost with that your mandatory employment related costs, so your, your MERCs. And so these are just built in here where you can just add some extra stuff and just adds percentage. So what I've done for Canada is added our, our Canada Pension Plan, EI, and then our, our work, work safe stuff. So you've got, you've got insurance for your workers. And then I add another 5%. So because when you're budgeting for time, you're budgeting for idle time as well. And so these are your actual what the business is paying. Somebody gets $22 an hour, but that's what it costs to pay them that. So this gives you more accurate uh, labor costs for, for calculations. Now let's move over to labor, the labor calculator. Now let me collapse these so it isn't so uh, intimidating. So this is basically a model, and like this whole spreadsheet is a model. And so we're not going in every week and every day and putting in your hours. We're just trying to create a general sense of what hours look like over the season. Because in a general way, they're going to be pretty consistent every week. They may increase if your sales really increase, and they may increase with farmers markets and times of year, but we can account for that here quite easily. So our wages copy over here, and let's just take a look at January because like our orders, once we put in all our hours for January, they're gonna to copy to all the other months. And basically right away, we've got a general sense of things uh, and how they are. So here you can see I've kind of split things between these two, these three different labor, labor levels and more hours are going to the owner uh, than others. So you can see here, wage one gets about 15 hours a week, wage two gets 11 hours a week, you get 45 hours a week. Now, you could, there's lots of ways you can do this, and you can shift your hours down to 30 and redistribute them here, and you can even have another employee in there as well. So lots of ways to do this. In the beginning, you may want to do those 45 or 55 or 65 hours a week. Uh, that's not a sustainable model over time. So as long as you're prepared to reduce your hours and hopefully increase your wage at the same time because you're running more efficiently. So what we've gone in is I've just gone in and put hours in for these wages based on what I know my week looks like. So if you remember back to our tasks sheet, Monday was a big sewing day. So I've got the person at low wage coming in and doing four hours, and I'm doing seven hours. Harvest day is a bigger day, so we're all in. These guys are coming in for part of the day. I'm in for the whole day. Wednesday, we were just soaking pea, if you remember, but we'll do some labeling and other stuff around. Thursday and Friday are exact mimics of Monday and Tuesday. Saturday is the farmer's market. I'm doing all the farmer's markets. Sunday uh, is uh, just soaking pee again. And uh, you know, it's the day I do bookkeeping and things like that, maybe some marketing emails. So th those are hours built into there. So this is just sort of your model week. And so you get a sense right away, you know, your, your, your payroll for January is $6,700. This is a realistic cost. At a certain scale, you can do all this on your own. You can do 60 hours a week, you can be more efficient, but at a certain point, you need the help. The reason to have the help is so other people know your system. So when slash if you get sick, when you get sick, when you get hurt, when something comes up, when you want to take a Saturday off, you have people there to, to, to step in, as opposed to like, I'm just not going to produce anything this week. A product like this, you're producing every week. It's a lot of commitment. Having more people to help you with that makes it a lot easier. Uh, I can tell you my first year was a light write-off for anything social because I was doing so much work and I wish I would have had more support that first year for sure. So these hours all copy to each month. 
right through. But you can see here in May that we get, uh, sorry, not in May, in June, we get an increase in hours here. And that's because we've added eight hours here on Wednesday for another farmer's market. So we bring another farmer's market in. And to be honest, I should probably be bumping uh, this up to four and this to five and this to eight to account for the, the increased amount of production we're doing uh, to, to harvest for this um, farmer's market. So we're just adding like an hour to everybody's shift there. And those are all going to copy down because uh, that market goes until September. So we can see they're still here. But in October, that market's done. So I'm actually going to go here. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go three and four and seven. You can see I already took this out here. I took that out before because our market's over. And this goes back to our, our wage level from before. So we can take a look here and uh, da, 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 I shouldn't be doing that. Um, and so, so now we can start to look at how our wages are, are spread out. And so we're paying about $26,000, but our wage in there is, is $58,000. So you can see like if you can make these projections happen, you know, you can make a decent amount of money here. Uh, our average labor per tray on these trays is $18 per tray and you're spending $84,000 on labor. So this is a real cost. Now, some people might just, uh, you know, uh, use these numbers and not pay yourself a wage. Um, and you can do that if you want. I, I've i never really understood that because this gives you a real sense of, especially if you're tracking your hours, like what am I making? Am I making $25 an hour or am I making $4 an hour? And it's an ongoing joke with farmers about they're making two or three dollars an hour because they're spending so much time in their work. And so if you have a good microgreen system, you should be able to run your business well, have really high sales and have a social life. And one way to do that is by having labor support. It is an investment more than it is an expense. So some insights to think about there in terms of how you set up your business. So now we've got everything looked at. We've looked at our crop expenses. We've looked at our labor expenses. We've looked at our overhead. So after this, we're gonna take a look at our season totals. And with this model that I've laid out, we can get a sense of how profitable uh, this microgreens business is with the figures that I've put in there.